That is an undefeated run with Bant vehicles, guys. That was phenomenal. What's going on, guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Hopefully, you guys are having a fantastic weekend, and you watched the collection update video yesterday. If you did not, you're going to want to take part in that. We've got a little bit of a challenge for you all that I am also taking part in that we can do together to enjoy the collection side of Magic a little bit more, too, because we do a lot of gameplay here. But uh, uh, collecting is really a big part of what I enjoy. So we're trying to do a little bit more of that and push in that direction. But with that out of the way, let's talk about today's deck, guys. We have got Bant Vehicles. Uh, now, a lot of vehicle decks that I have been seeing uh, are usually either two color or perhaps Esper. Uh, generally not running the green in particular. But what running the green grants you is the Asika's Chariot play. Uh, which I think is a really big play because not only can this copy the two twos that you're getting off of the initial play of the Asika's Chariot, but more importantly, you can copy a lot of the pilot tokens that you get from things like Prodigy's Prototype uh, that would allow you to then theoretically crew more vehicles to hopefully get more power in. Um, now, what's really nice about these kinds of decks is they're a little bit more resilient to things like sweepers. Uh, generally, the sweepers are sorcery speed, uh, because you've got so many vehicles that just provide other value, as an example, Reckon or Bankbuster, or even the Surge Hacker Mech, which just comes down and deals some damage, it's kind of okay if they sweep, because while it's not great for you, it does give you, uh, because your vehicles stay on the field, uh, you usually still have outs the following turn, because you can still get in for an attack, as long as you've got a creature in hand that can crew the vehicles on the following turn. Uh, and so it's actually a really resilient deck in that way. Uh, now, obviously, there's a lot of artifact hate and things like that in the format. Farewell comes to mind. Uh, so we do expect some difficulties there. But the idea is basically just to theoretically with things like prototype ramp into some of these vehicles, get those in for some massive, massive damage, uh, and then hopefully be able to rebuild very quickly if need be. We've got the uh, ingenious Smith to hopefully fetch out some things for us. Uh, we've got the hotshot mechanic, which is just going to be able to crew very, very quickly. A little bit of removal with the portable hold, nothing too crazy there. Uh, and then at the very top, we've got AO, which we can use to look at the top seven cards, put any number of non-land permanents with total mana value four or less among them onto the battlefield. Or we can put two 1-1 counters on each permanent you control, each permanent. Uh, that is a creature or vehicle. So that actually really, really uh, powers out some of our stuff. So that's kind of the goal with AO here uh, if it dies. So we'll see how everything goes. We do have a nice little patchwork automaton too. This is a nice little threat uh, solely because it's difficult to deal with. That ward cost is going to cost a good bit of mana. Uh, and so even if they're trying to like, if as an example, use a portable hole on it, they're going to have to pay at least three. Uh, and that's kind of a lot just to get rid of this. So hopefully we can get in there for some damage and uh, use that to crew. But all in all, guys, I'm really excited to try this. I haven't really messed around with vehicles too much. It's not a deck archetype that I'm super stoked about. Uh, but as I've been playing this deck and as I've been playing other vehicles uh, to, to kind of test, vehicle decks to test, I've kind of found that I, I kind of love it. So we're, we're going to try this out. We'll probably see some more vehicle decks on the channel in the near future. But without further ado, guys, Let's jump into game one. Let's see how this one goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And this is actually a pretty easy keep. So we do need a little bit more in the mana department, but we've got quite a bit that we can do here. So I'm going to give this one a shot. We are just going to play this out turn one. So that way we can go ahead and get that hot shot mechanic down there. Uh, that's just a really strong play for us, in my opinion, uh, and hopefully going to help us get this bank buster moving. So we'll see what we can do like commune with the spirits so my assumption is obviously the enchantment deck uh which is good and bad in some fashions because we do have the portable hole we should be able to deal with the naturalist play uh where we're gonna run into issues or well we'll see <laughs> we will definitely see uh let's do this um let's first things first just attack in 
And I think we do want to get the Bank Buster down this turn. Uh, despite the Automaton being just a phenomenal play, we do want to get this down early. I think at this point, we've got the crew ability up. And so I'd really like to make sure we can get in there with this uh, as best we can. Okay. Um, now this turn, we've got some options. So I think... To start us off, I will go ahead and portable hole on the visitor. Now they may have a hex proof. No, it looks like they don't. Um, let's go ahead and get this in. And actually, we played in the wrong order. So we should have played the automaton first, then the portable hole. That was definitely a mistake on my end. We're going to recognize that I do make mistakes quite often. Uh, and so that is okay. That's just part of the game. Uh, and so, you know, we got to gotta try and clean that up in the next few turns but we'll see what we can do there's the runeforge champion definitely expected that to come down and that is scary uh so now they're able to play these runes very very quickly and very very easily which is not what you want um okay huh that's interesting um that could be really helpful, potentially. All right, let's do this. It's going to give us a counter on the automaton. Um, it's going to be a crew cost of three. I think we can just crew with this because we really don't need to uh, do too much there. And let's attack in. Um, part of me really did want to play this, but I kind of want to wait uh, and use it to bounce um their runeforge champion just to slow them down so if we get another land we can actually use this as basically a tempo play uh and yeah i mean bouncing a runeforge champion doesn't seem great uh and it's really not however if they don't go off this turn and just win the game uh and we draw a land next turn we should be able to lock this one up pretty quickly so i'm gonna see if we can make that happen uh so i think holding off is actually the right play uh, this is the scary part, though. So obviously with the Runeforge Champion, they can basically do whatever they need to do. If they have a Naturalist in play... Wow, Akami. Okay. Uh, Akami is very, very good. Uh, but that does mean they probably didn't have a Naturalist, which is also good for us because that's basically free runes. Uh, and we don't really want that to be the case. So uh, they are going to throw a counter here. I'm interested to see if they attack in with the Runeforge Champion because, again, that does still open up the Moon Snare play. Looks like they're not going to. Probably the smartest play they could have made there. Um, all right, so how do we want to do this? Um, what do we need to bounce here? I think it's the Kami. Yeah, so let's bounce the Kami. Uh, what this does is, again, get this off of the field. That rune is going to go to the graveyard, which is also quite helpful. Uh, and that leaves them with a single Runeforge champion that they are going to have to block with. Uh, and I think that that's much more advantageous for us than anything else here. So let's do this. Um, let's do this. I think we crew like this, actually. Um, so we are going to attack with everything here solely to pressure them even more. Um, now, they can just freely block the 2-2, and that's fine, but they're going down to 2. Uh, and what we've allowed at this point is basically we've got as much damage as we can possibly get. So there's that Kami again. Uh, but if they don't have enough creatures, we do just get to attack in and kind of win the game. Now, they could have another rune of uh, sustenance, but we did get rid of one of them, which is phenomenal because that lifelink is really a big damper on what we're trying to do. So, oh no, they do have another one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, what would we like then off the top? A portable hole would be great. Another moon snare would be quite good. Um, them gaining five life off of this is going to be a problem. No doubt about that. Ingenious Smith does give us another look, uh, which is quite helpful. So let's go ahead and do that first. Um, what do we draw? Not what we need. Although the Surge Hacker mech does help, I believe. Let's see. Twice the number of vehicles you control to target creature. Ah, we don't have quite enough lands, do we? That's very unfortunate. Okay, so... Can we math this out a little bit? Or should we just draw a card? That's also a possibility. Um, 
target creature or planeswalker i wish we had just one more land here uh and that moon snare would have produced that land for us let's be clear uh but i think we did the right thing at the right time so i'm not too worried about that if we attack in with everything i don't think that's good enough so i'm gonna go ahead and do this whoops not what i meant let's draw a card another bank buster okay uh so i think we just have to pass i i should have like counted this up uh because potentially we could have gotten through but i'm not sold on it they're gonna be able to gain so much life here that's the problem so they did get a naturalist and they do have the land to play it i believe uh yeah oh no yeah okay they do with the pathway land um hmm. so that surge hacker mech is going to come down and is going to deal with something here which is pretty useful um and i'm very interested to see if they decide they want to like attack this turn um that kami is scary and they certainly can if they'd like um but i'm very curious to see if they do no they don't okay land is super helpful very very helpful okay so let's play it for the white uh, what we can do now is play a bank buster plus the mech. Yeah, so let's do that. It's also going to throw some counters here uh, and there. Then let's play the mech. So it's going to deal eight to something, which I think has to be this. Perfect. Okay, now let's crew this. Uh, the question is with what? I think this. And let's crew... Honestly, I don't think we need to. We just attack him. Um, because oh. we're spread out so much here that I think we'd rather have the spread damage since they can gain some life off of the naturalist here. But we did it. We got there. That was really close, actually. I was a little worried about that. They were definitely taking over the game, but we made it happen, guys. That was awesome. Definitely a couple misplays, so we need to clean those up in game two. But let's go ahead and jump there now. All right, everybody. Here we are for game number two uh and how do we feel about this one it's a bit of an interesting one we can't really play the moon snare but we do have a patchwork automaton here it's also some powerful late game plays i think this is a bad keep but i'm gonna try it uh i don't love it that's a much uh well a very helpful draw i will say uh just to have that turn one play is really nice and this deck certainly has a lot of turn one plays so it is really good that we're able to draw that uh especially if we get to draw a vehicle this turn that'd be awesome Looks like we're not going to, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to do this and uh, just kind of push down the road the, the pathway choice. I think we're going to end up playing it for green, but uh, because I'm not sure yet, I would rather wait since we do have the AO in hand. It's nice to be able to play that double white if we need it. This does, I guess, allow us the green. Okay, so they've got Path of Peril. That's frustrating, but not the end of the world. And that kind of makes the decision for us that we can just kind of throw it out and hope for the best. Can't do too much else at this point. So this is going to be a tough matchup if I had to guess. Now, I did mention we're fairly resilient to sweepers, and that is somewhat true. However, uh, this is going to be a challenging game just on the simple fact that if they kill all of the stuff that crews vehicles, we obviously can't crew vehicles. And so we are going to have to deal with that at some point. Um, but I'm very interested to see how this game goes. So we'll see. I do assume they have a, a Doom Scar here. Uh, which, again, can't do much about, so we'll just let that happen. Uh, and they're leaving up quite a bit of mana here as well. That's interesting. Uh, so we could play that out for white pretty safely. Hmm. And we actually have some options here. So, with that being said, what I'm going to do is actually crew this up. If they have a Vanishing Verse, uh, that kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world, actually. All right, so what we can do is actually moon snare this if we decide to. Um, but I actually think we're going to let that go. We've got the AO here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play that now. Uh, and again, we basically just have to hope they don't have a vanishing verse. Uh, if they use a doom scar, we at least get some value off of this. Um, with the uh, first ability, which is really nice. It does allow us to rebuild quite quite handily. So there is the Doom Scar again. We expected that. Um, but this does allow us some amount of value. 
total mana value four or less. Okay. Um, I really think it's just both of the Smiths, weirdly. Uh, both of these are going to trigger, so these are going to really help us rebuild. Definitely want to take that Bank Buster and definitely want to take the Asika's Chariot. Um, that's, I think, the right call for sure. Got the Soaring Sky. That's interesting. Um, okay. We'll throw this out for white, I suppose. Let's play the Bank Buster. It's going to give us some counters. Let's go ahead and play the Chariot as well. We might as well. Uh, we do want to get as much damage in as we can, I think, here. Uh, so that just makes the most sense. And now we're well set up for next turn. If they have another Sleeper, they have another Sleeper. We just kind of have to hope they don't. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's just the place we're in. And Loth is a good sign that they don't have a Sleeper. So that's, that's helpful. Yep. Um, so we can guarantee kill the Loth here, if we so choose. Uh, we do get to play a land here as well. That's helpful. So what we can do is actually portable hole on one of these. I don't think we're going to find much of a better target anyway, uh, truthfully. This just isn't the kind of deck that's going to run a lot of that. So I'm actually okay with doing this. Uh, we'll go ahead and get one of these off the field. This is also going to power these guys up, which is phenomenal. Um, honestly, I think we just play this too. Again, uh, just to kind of get some more onto the field here, if nothing else. Uh, I kind of just want to do this just to be a douche. Um, okay. Uh, so let's crew this with this. Let's crew this with these two. Um, let's send the smith here. Let's send both of these there. This is going to be a blood on the snow deck, so it's very clear that they're probably going to have that next turn. Um, but we are going to deal max damage while we can and just get that out of there. Um, and I suppose we'll go ahead and draw a card. There's really not a good reason not to. Uh, we have nothing else. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. And we get another moon snare. All right. Not great. But that's okay. Uh, this only triggers once each turn, by the way. That's one thing that uh, I need to keep in mind. So the portable hole powered these guys up, but we can't do it twice in a turn. Uh, so just as a quick heads up. Wow, and we won. They must not have had the blood on the snow. Okay. Uh, wow. I am, I am shocked. I did not think we were going to win that. Wow. Okay, cool. We did it. Let's jump into game three. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And uh, yeah, I mean, I do think we keep this. We've got our mana kind of in order, so I think this is OK. Um, the question becomes, in what order do we want to tap these certain things? Um, OK, uh, well, with that in mind, I mean, we can just go ahead and play this out. So the question becomes, do we want a bank buster or do we want an automaton first? Part of me is kind of leaning towards the automaton. Um, that ward cost is going to be difficult for them to kind of deal with, which is helpful. Uh, let's do this. That's fine. And let's go ahead and play that automaton. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm not super convinced that this is the right play. I'll be honest. I think having the bank buster out is really good, but um, we can't crew it yet anyway. So that's that's fine. Okay, uh, hmm. What do we get rid of here? I really like that. I think it's gotta be a land. Nope, wrong land. All right, so we get rid of an AO and a farmland and then mill a couple cards. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. <laughs> okay, so we do this. Uh, we... I think it just go bank buster, right? Uh, and this is gonna allow us the attack in with the automaton here. So they can block, but they can't ward. They they can't pay the ward cost for this, so they're just gonna get a treasure token. Uh, which I think is a mistake on their end. I think they were expecting they could, uh, which is good that they can't. 
Haha. <laughs> Well, that was nice. Uh, so they were not able to kill the automaton, which is phenomenal. So now if they do want to, they're probably gonna have to spend a full turn to do it. And yeah, it looks like that is the case here, which is fine. We just slowed them down a little bit, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Let's go ahead and play the land out here. Let's play the Smith. Let's just see what we get. Um, Uh, let's see really quickly. Cast a pilot or vehicle spell. So we can actually pilot this turn. So I think we actually do that. Uh, so this is going to allow us an attack in for four. Uh, it is also going to get that uh, ingenious smith up. And here we can get a, that full attack in. And again, we're we're getting there. We need double white for the AO. And we did discard a, uh, a white land, which is kind of a problem but it looks like they're going to be able to take something here. I honestly think we just show them the AO. As much as this sucks, like, I think it's just the right call. We get to mech here to kill this. Get another counter there. Uh, we get to crew this guy up and get in for an attack at seven, which is pretty good. So now they are facing down uh lethal next turn between these two threats uh so they have to do something about this uh which is fine because it looks like they're stuck on mana and it also looks like they're a deck that has more single target removal spells not necessarily a whole lot of sweepers uh and so we might be okay uh they might be able to garnish a turn here uh and they I, they could still win but um i think we're in okay shape okay they're gonna feed the swarm very clever to do the feed the swarm play versus anything else here just for the uh life loss on their end so we did get the white which is helpful um let's make sure we're doing this properly so let's go ahead and crew this or excuse me draw a card here uh then we can crew this and get in for an attack of five so now again, they're facing down lethal just with what's on the field. Um, and then whatever we happen to draw in the next turn, they're so stuck on mana. That feels bad, I'm sure. Okay, so we have the portable hole to deal with that. And that's game. 100% game. And what's nice is we don't even have to crew a vehicle to do it. <laughs> there we go. That is an undefeated run with BAMP vehicles, guys. That was phenomenal. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys, so Bant Vehicles coming out strong with an undefeated run. Uh, that was pretty phenomenal. I think uh, I, I want to say we might have actually already played a Bant Vehicles, but uh, I think this is an updated version of the list. So I'm just going to clarify now. If there is another Bant Vehicles deck on the channel, we'll have to rename this one something else. But regardless, this is a really fun one uh, and obviously very, very strong. Again, the resilience of vehicles against sweepers is what really stands out to me as just a really strong play. And what that allows you to do, now this doesn't happen every time, so please keep that in mind, but what that allows you to do is if you top deck something like a hotshot mechanic, even if your opponent sweeped all of your creatures from the previous turn, so you got nothing but some vehicles on the field, that hotshot mechanic comes down, and while no, it can't attack right away, it can crew right away. Uh, and therefore you always sort of have like, it's almost like giving it haste in a way. You're just still getting in for damage every turn. Um, now, obviously that's not always the case, but that is a scenario that happens enough that it's worth playing this deck or at least worth considering it as an option. So I really enjoyed this, guys. I thought this was a phenomenal deck. Again, undefeated run. That is so sick. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the collection update uh, yesterday. I do also hope you're enjoying the gameplay. I'm trying to get ahead of it because I will be be out of town a little bit for uh some other not just uh, caitlin and i are going on a little honeymoon trip but then also uh i've got a conference coming up so it's a busy time coming up i'm trying to get ahead of things so it's not going to take a toll on the channel but uh just as a heads up if we miss a day or something like that that's probably why but guys i really do appreciate it thank you so much for watching i love you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend i'll see you again very soon